Hi, this is Margo. This is Sunday afternoon, September the 20th, 2020. I hope everyone is doing well and hanging in there. It's been a hard week all the way around for everyone. We've had all kinds of fires and floods and hurricanes and um, I think everybody's suffering. But um, anyway, welcome to the show today. This will be my weekly YouTube update on methane and Arctic sea ice. And if you'd like to see shows more frequently, I post them for my Subscribestar members daily um, on Subscribestar.com forward slash Margo. And we'd love to have you join us over there. So, <clears throat> let's get started today. We're going to start with the NOAA methane data for yesterday. I've been tracking this 477-469 millibar reading um, since March the ni March th March of 2019, and. Um, now I'm tracking it on a daily basis. I was just doing it on a weekly basis, but this is my weekly update for that. So yesterday, for the 19th, for the Met Op 1 satellite in the morning, the mean or average was 1,910 parts per billion, and the high reading in the range was 2461. Now that range, uh, that this this pink color is between 2,000 and whatever the highest number here is on the range on each each GIF here. So in this case, it's between 2,000 and 2,461 parts per billion. And we can see a lot of pinks across the planet, uh, mainly in the northern hemisphere, but we do have some coming in in the southern hemisphere as well. In the afternoon, the mean was 1910 and the high reading was 2547. On the Met Op2 satellite, the, in the morning, the mean was 1889, the high reading was 2347. And in the afternoon, the mean was 1890, and the high reading was 2387. So here's the spreadsheet and the chart that we're working off of. So here we, here's our data for the 19th, and up here is where I added up the mean numbers that I just called off and divided by 4 and we come up with an average of 1899.75 parts per billion which shows a decrease from last Saturday of 1 part per billion and so here it is where the line goes down a tiny bit so we had barely peaked up over this 1900 parts per billion line and um, but it's still very high and we're still in in the rise rising time of the year for methane not until about mid-october does it start going down because um, things are still heating up from the summer so um, <coughs> we've had um, this year since since February 29th where it started over I started over on my data for the year we've gone up 23.25 parts per billion and since March 1st of 2019 we've gone up 42.5 parts per billion so we are in runaway runaway heating and methane rise and all the stuff. All the feedback loops are kicking in and everything's being triggered and there are articles coming out everywhere. You can see them. You can look them up for yourself. But we're in runaway abrupt 
climate chaos now. Um, if you want to see what it's done during the week, uh, here's where I tracked it every day, and and um, my subscribe star members got it on a blow by blow basis every day. So here we are for the 19th, but here's what happened during the week. So last week on my report on Saturday it was 1900.75 and um, so that that was the hot that was the highest we've seen on the weekly report um, now it had gone up higher than that a couple of times it had been 1901 on August 28th and um, let's see okay so okay so there's where it was 1975 and so for the week it had gone up 2.5 parts per billion so that's a, a pretty good sized increase for a week so then on Sunday it went down 0.5 and then on Monday it went up 0.75 back up to 1901 and then on Tuesday it went up to 1902 so up another parts per billion on Wednesday it went up another part per billion to 1903 so by Wednesday we had gone up 2.25 parts per billion and then on Thursday it started going back down and so it went down 0.75 and then on Friday it, it went down uh, to 1900.5 so uh, a decrease of 1.75 that day and then now on our report today it went down another 0.75 from on Saturday from Friday so overall um, for the week we've gone down one part per billion so um, that's where we're at so it it'll do that it'll go up and down it's not just it's it's kind of like the markets you know they go up they go down but there's a general trend of up right now so there's that now we'll run the methane data now they've put Sunday up but we're going to look at Saturday data and um, we'll get a good comparison between the two different models so I have Saturday the 19th loaded up I have the Arctic view and surface level ready to go There's our color ledger at the bottom. So here's where we left off on Friday where you're seeing this green like covering almost all of the Arctic as the background color. Now that green that you're seeing, this dark green is 1920 parts per billion. That's this dark green here and then as it gets lighter it goes higher in in the in the reading and then then we go up into the yellows and like this this um, yellow green is 2020 like um, this this yellow green color is 2020 about and then um, once you get into the oranges and the reds you're getting on up there the bright red is is 2100 that's this color here 2100 parts per billion and then when you get into the dark brown sometimes I call it black because like up here it looks so dark that range is between 2160 to 10,000 parts per billion and if you see a white area pop up 
I've concluded that's because it's higher than what they're reading. It's higher than their chart. And we've seen that not only on methane but on on other some of these other gases. So here's where it left off. We've got a release on Svalbard that we're going to watch. We've still got it um, spewing up here by Severnaya and in the Kara Sea. We've been seeing, um, seeing it stream out from this Siberia coastline over in the Laptev Sea and streaming out in this East Siberia Sea and Chukchi Sea and then all the way across the Arctic. And remember, the sea ice is still melting and it's, it's low, it's quite thin. And we're going to go over that in a little bit here. And um, it hasn't, it's, we're not at the end of the melt season yet. Um, the end of the summer will be on Tuesday, the 22nd. We'll see if it starts refreezing then or if it keeps on melting because of the, the high temperatures and because of the melting from underneath. So let's run this. <clears throat> now here we're seeing streaming up see how it's streaming up from the, it's like opening up from the coastline and streaming out see and this, the, these areas around the coastline are quite shallow and so the sediments are closer to the surface and remember that this open water it's been open water for months now and, um, and so it has absorbed a lot of heat and a lot of radiation and so now the sediments are heating up as well So we're starting to see these waves just move out. <coughs> Here from North America, we've got a wave moving up from Canada. You see that? <coughs> I've, um, I've had an awful time with, with reacting to the smoke this week. It's been pretty bad. And then on Friday, um, there was something really toxic that got released in the air. I talked about it in my show on Friday on Subscribestar, but um, it was, I went out, took the trash out and checked the mail and stuff and I wasn't out more than five to ten minutes and I'm still sick from that because of whatever whatever was in the air so um, it was toxic and I think a lot of people are going to be experiencing respiratory issues as these toxic clouds move across and um, move across the different areas with all the different different tweaks and things that happen So, um, there's that. So now let's move to the North Pole view. I'm better, but you can hear my voice, and I was doing better. But, um, I just, um, okay, here's the North Pole view. I just decided there are, um, certain things that I'm really not going to be talking about in that much detail on YouTube because of the the, um, the subject matter and the trolls and and I don't want my channel to come under attack or anything and so those there are certain topics that I'm just reserving for my members 
over on subscribe star too so um, the things I'm going to be talking about over here on YouTube are just going to be a lot more generic mainly just just doing reports and that's about it <coughs> so we're look we're seeing it stream off of out of the UK and Ireland and look at Europe here all the way out into the Atlantic Ocean Europe is filled it's really coming back to life here um, here's the um, Persian Gulf here's India here's China here's Korea now we're seeing it creep out over the coastline so this is an indication of higher methane readings um, normally by this time of year we would see China and India just filled up and so this is why I think the algorithms were tweaked back in January because we're in, we're seeing the highest methane readings yet on the NOAA data but it's not reflecting here on CAMS the way it should so it's the way it is you know they have to tweak things and change things so first of all so that we'll will stay calm so that green doesn't look as bad as orange and orange doesn't look as bad as red and brown and um, and also so that they can measure the higher readings as thing as it keeps going higher and higher and higher they have to tweak it so that the colors go go down so and no we'll never know the exact readings we never will because it's it's um we're not part of the club that's why we're just not part of that club and um, that's okay that's okay we don't have to be part of that club we can see all we need to see with what they're releasing now look at North America see how much different it is this week we had a lot of blues down here in the south last week but now look at it it's just filled up with the green and remember that's a high reading and um, look at West Texas here coming up <coughs> and California still got a whole bunch wildfires are still burning and um, the smoke has cleared out somewhat in my area because we had different winds but now they're moving back around and um, it doesn't matter you know they're gonna be putting toxic stuff in the air whether it's smoke or something else um, so it's just the way it is and this is this is it's not going to get better it's this is the way it is just expect everything to be uh, keep getting worse and um, getting hotter and the storms getting more severe and more flooding and you know the whole thing and um, Sam Carana uh, I presented his latest blog post a couple of days ago he thinks that we could be hitting 3C pretty soon just depends it just depends on how fast things go up and whether we have an El Nino or not and 
who knows what it just whatever you know I'm just kind of resigned to whatever's going to happen look at New Zealand it's coming back to life and we're devolving we're devolving as uh, as you know society's breaking down and you know this has been prophesied in the end times it's all this has all been prophesied in the Bible and, and like the Hopi Indians and you know I mean it's it's all over the place and um, you know that's why we need to get our spiritual houses in order because we're going to be leaving the planet and and um, it's um, Okay, here's 500 HPA. This this w should relate to the level that we saw on CAMS. Now here's the highest reading from China over to India. And up here, look, it's in southern Russia. And from Japan across. And we've got more reds in the Arctic too. Here's total column. Look, that's awful. Look at that, all the way across. And now we've got reds on Saudi Arabia again. And it's heading into red here in the Pacific Ocean. So there's that. Um, I will show one thing, though, um, while we're here. I want to show ozone. we're in big trouble with the ozone and um, here it is for today this is the global view this is measured in Dobson units and the um, the bright yellow is 300 Dobson units that's considered normal or average or a healthy ozone layer and then as it goes, if it gets thicker, it goes up into the oranges and the reds and stuff. Um, and then anything to the left of the yellow, going down into the greens and blues, it's thin. And you see this black line here? That's, um, they put that in as a mar marker that, that the colors, the colors starting with this bluish purple which is between 200 to 220 Dobson units that's in the danger zone and um, anything below that's in the danger zone so and we've got it quite thin up here over the Arctic and over Canada now that's in the aqua that's 220 to 240 where the aqua is um, so I want to show you the Antarctic. Now this is this is pretty disturbing. Now they are at the end of their um, their winter season, and the sun is starting to come up. So they're at their coldest, and so this is when the ozone hole is is thinnest and largest. But this is look how big it is it goes way out past past the continent and it goes down into <coughs> so so inside this line this black line we've got the 200 and then this color is 120 175 then this blue is 150 then this dark blue is 125 now there is a black color that's hard to tell um, and it's a hundred to 125 Dobson units and that's the lowest this scale goes 
So I would think if it's, I don't know what it would read if it was under 100. But um, that's a large area that's in that dark blue. And in fact, um, I was reporting on this this week. And I saw in the forecast period, we did have some black, a black portion open up. Um, let me see if, if that if that's going to come back in now. I I haven't loaded this up. I'm just I just decided to show it. So it'll take a couple of seconds. So far, it looks um, all that navy color. I don't see. It's hard to tell. I would need to lighten my screen to really see it better. Oh, there it is. You see? There's a black hole coming in on Wednesday. And it's growing bigger on Thursday. So it does go into the black. Um, so that's that's not good. That is not good. Here it goes. See, it looks like a big blob. Now get ready. Look right here. There it is. See? See the black? Here it comes. And there it was. So, that's not good. And the sun's coming up. You can see a lot of the Antarctic now on NASA Worldview. And, um, so that ice in the glaciers, they're melting. It's going away, and we've got big problems. So that's what I was saying. You know, we need to really, <coughs> really think about, you know, how are we going to be ready to leave? Um, we're we're going to have to, everybody's going to be facing this. Everybody is. And, um, you know, we're going to be ready. Because getting ready to, to die, it's a process. It takes time, you know, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. Are you ready? You know. So I think it's going to be soon for a lot of people. I mean, we've already seen a lot of people dying. So now let's go to sea ice and snow cover. Here's from Climate Reanalyzer for today. And um, what we've been seeing from the Navy model, we were able to see this the thickest sea ice kind of migrate and morph down. It's a, it was changing. It used to be an egg shape, and it's now moving kind of into a linear shape. But it's carrying some thinner sea ice with it, and so as it's moving down um, along this Canadian coastline and and it's coming out through these tributaries. Um, it's also push, pushing out the, the extent a little bit more here. It's not that this is refreezing. It's not doing that yet, really. But this is the sea ice that's coming down with the, with the thicker sea ice. You'll see when we, when we get there. Now this model shows a little bit of sea ice in between the tail and the main part here in the Beaufort Sea. But on NASA Worldview, this, this is 
um, this is pretty much open and the tail looks thinner to me <coughs> so let's go back to last Sunday for our report so here's where we were last Sunday and um, it's it looked like a little bit more sea ice out there so let's just click through and we'll see how it how it went this week here was Sunday here's Monday Tuesday you can see it getting a lot thinner on this ear edge up here and on the tail Wednesday <coughs> Thursday Friday Saturday and here's Sunday where we see it's kind of rounded out now like I said I think that's from from that thickest ice moving down so here's the US Navy sea ice thickness model for today we can see okay here's the graph over here where it's um, the dark purple is about one meter thick the blue is about 1.25 meters thick and then the aqua is <coughs> is uh, the dark aqua is 1.5 the light aqua is is um, the bright aqua is a little over two meters thick so this is what we've got today let's blow it up a little more so we're seeing it fill it's it's still quite thin like a film on this eastern coast of Greenland and we're seeing ice the ice has come back up to the edge like I said it's not really started refreezing yet but the pieces are moving being pushed back up to the coastlines because of the the wind and the waves and, and stuff so we're seeing less white area here around Ellesmere Island as the ice pieces are coming back up now this is where this thick sea ice is 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 um, feeding out and it's been moving down scooting down and here's a piece that had broken off and now it's moving on down into this Beaufort Sea area and so it's just gradually this whole thing is kind of getting skinnier and moving down but you can see see what I'm talking about about this this ice that's moving with it that was all part of the thicker sea ice but it's thinner on the edges and it's all kind of moving together so I think that's why this has come out this week so here's the 30-day animation the model forecasts out a week from now to the 27th and the data starts on August August the 29th so let's zoom in and watch this So you can see what I'm talking about about this see how it was an egg shape and how it was morphing as it's starting to to divide up and disintegrate <coughs> and you can see it flowing out here through these tributaries and down and see how the end end of it 
is just moving down. I mean, it's a fast. I mean, you see it. It's moving fast. Okay, this is at the end of the model. That's the 27th. So that's the forecast for where it's going to be next Sunday. So it's thinned out around this Greenland coastline. We still have a little bit up here, but it's this is just like a film. This white is just like a film where it's just kind of like barely there. And um, the the bottom end of this thicker ice is just scooting down, still scooting down. <clears throat> and we're not really seeing um, refreeze yet. It's just still it's it's a lot of moving around and stuff. So we'll see what happens. You know, maybe this is a little bit of refreeze in the in these tributaries. But if if it is, it's just very slight. So there's that. Now we'll look at this is the National Snow and Ice Data Center Sea Ice Index. This is the daily. This is for yesterday, the 19th. Here's the blue marble view. And th there they're showing not much, not much at all it, in between the tail and the main portion. Of course, that, that lines up with the picture we saw from yesterday, not the one from today. And then the blue is the, the constant. The more blue it is, the less concentrated it is. The more thin it is and the more gaps you have where there's water coming through and stuff. So here's their chart for Arctic sea ice extent. So here's the blue line this this year. The dotted line is 2012 and that's when we were at the lowest ever that we recorded. Um, so it's just above, it's below all the other years so it's just above 2012 this time. At this time of year then. But you have to remember that 2012, that was much thicker. <coughs> and we can't really compare because things are, it's a different world now. And that extent could go away in a heartbeat with the right climate conditions. Here's the Greenland ice sheet today, and we're showing, let's see, I don't see any salmon color, I don't see any daily melt there yesterday. Here it is for the melt days since January the 1st, and this is their melt extent. The red line is this year, and the dotted blue line is the median from 1981 to 2010. And so it's been high. See, it's gone up and down and up and down. And we've been up as high as about 33% melt extent back in uh, the end of June, June, it looks like, and then 
it's had some peaks and now now it's at the median it's about the same as because it's getting cooler there so the melting should be over for Greenland hopefully now let's look at NASA worldview we'll refresh to get all the latest data this is for today that sea ice concentration will take the clouds away <coughs> this is where we're at right now where you're seeing the reds and or the colors it's that's where it's melting and so we still got high melt here on the top end on this ear it's still disintegrating high melt here on this northern and, and on the eastern side also on the tail it's still disintegrating and the thickest sea ice is right right down in here right in here and so we can see we've got we've got it melting there too you can see evidence of it here So let's go back to, oh, and you see the yellows in here, that's where it's melting. This black dot is the North Pole, and the sun is going down. Let's go back to the 13th. And as the sun goes down, we'll have this area in the middle that we can't see and the hole will get bigger and bigger and bigger until it's all dark up there for the winter time so here's where we were last Sunday so we were seeing a lot more heavy melt up here on this ear so let's just click through and see what happened this week so here was last Sunday here's Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So that was, we're seeing a lot of melt, and I'm thinking a lot of ice was just breaking away and spreading out here. Here was Friday, here's Saturday, and then here's today. So the air temperatures are getting cooler up here, so that will help to slow down the melt. So, let's see. So here's this black dot where we can't see because the sun's going down. It's at an angle now, so we're going to see shadows and some different colors that we're not used to seeing. So here's Greenland. We've got a bunch of clouds here. And um, we've got snow going on up here. You can see the snow that's come in on the land. And here's Ellesmere Island with snow covered. So it's kind of hard to see any sea ice here. We've got clouds, um, thin layer of clouds there. Now it's thicker. So here's the ice edge. You can see it right along here. You can see there's lots of clouds with all these different systems moving around. So, 
we can't really see what's going on right there today but um let's see so that's this is ice free here let's turn on the ice layer again so we can get an idea here's the edge now we can we had a pretty good view of the ice yesterday here's this ice edge on the east east side let's go back to yesterday Here we go. You can see lots of big open areas, lots of cracks. Here it is. This is a pretty good view. We've got a few clouds, but you can see the cracks and where it's breaking up and deteriorating. So you kind of have to use your imagination with what you saw in the models and see what you can match up here. And the sea ice has snow on it because it's been snowing. See? Here, here's a good view. Now this is, this is part of that thicker sea ice. It's, remember, it's coming all the way down here. Um, or down here right now. So it's around in this area. So right here, we can see how much it's breaking up. See, it just breaks up and then comes off. This is what's left. And unfortunately, we can't, can't see too much through those clouds. I think the day before we had a better view too. Here we go. Let's see. You can see these lines, they're all cracks. Melt ponds. See? So that's what it looks like. And there are lots of just open areas and with a lot of space in between the ice pieces. So that's where we're at. Here's this ice edge. See this is this is what I'm talking about. This is very thin here. Then we got the bigger pieces. And we got a lot of open water. So as it comes apart, you know, it just starts drifting out more and more and more. Until it goes away. It's a par it's a process. It's not like it's there and then it's gone. 
although it seems like it sometimes. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish up this show. I'm continuing reading from the prophets of the Old Testament. So this week I did Amos. I finished up Amos. I did Obadiah. And then I've started on Jonah. So this is Jonah chapter 2. It's, it's um after he got swallowed up by the big fish. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and all thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth were her bars. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted, fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Jonah chapter 2. So you never know what's going to happen. So, I think the end is near. And we all need to get our spiritual houses in order. And um, I recommend you all get right with God and Jesus before it's too late. So, I'm praying for everybody. So, until next time, I love you all. God bless you. Go in peace, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.